Ja, herzlich willkommen zu einer neuen Ausgabe SI Talk Startinterview. Precipitate Gold, Jeff Wilson wird uns die Company vorstellen. Und ja, ich habe keinen da, um was es geht, außer dass es um Gold geht. Um, I said in my German introduction, I have not too much clue about what the company do, besides it's maybe goes about gold. Yes, <laughs> that's correct. The name gives that away, yes. <laughs> the, the name gives this direction. Uh, so give us the one minute elevator pitch. Okay. Precipitate Gold is a gold exploration company very much focused on early stage exploration and discovery. Uh, we have two assets in the country of the Dominican Republic. Mm -hmm. um, our two projects are located adjacent to known mineral deposits. Uh, our first project in the country is Juan de Herrera. This is immediately adjacent to Gold Quest Mining. They have about three and a half million ounces there that they are pushing through to pre-feasibility. And there are a number of exploration targets in that belt that we have delineated and, and expect to follow up. Mm -hmm. uh, our latest acquisition in the country, however, is in a, in a very active district of the country. And we have ground, about 12,000 hectares of ground, immediately surrounding, we are right up against the claim boundaries, of Barracks Pueblo Viejo mine. Mm -hmm. And this mine is, you know, depending on what study, what year, is about the fifth largest gold mining operation in the world certainly one of the largest gold mining operations in, in Latin America. And we have uh, a big land package with some previous work, some encouraging prior drilling, but a number of new targets that uh, we've identified that have never really been tested. So mm -hmm. you're sort of in elephant country, if you will, being in, in, the, in the shadow of a, of a major mining operation, uh, yet having that you know, sort of exploration and discovery potential. Mm -hmm. So you follow the old saying, um, you find new mines beside old mines. Correct, yes. Yeah, and part of that strategy with respect to that project adjacent to, to Barrick is, you know, people will sort of ask me, well, if that ground surrounding was so great, why hasn't Barrick acquired it previously? And p there is a story to that in that at the time that Barrick acquired that ground, this was a, a previously nationalized Dominican government-run operation. They made an environmental disaster out of the mining operation there, um, and so they shut it down and they put it out to bid to the private sector. And Barrick's bid to win that operation, part of it was they had to clean up the environmental mm -hmm. um, uh, problems, but also then do go a bit of a joint sharing with the government. They were restricted to what amount of ground they could pick up in that bid. So the government said, you can only have the core mine And we'd like other companies to pick up the surrounding ground so that we create some competition, so that we create more activity. So initially, Barrick was restricted, but there's nothing to prevent them from acquiring the ground now and or doing a deal with someone like ourselves mm -hmm. who, mm -hmm. who, uh, who owns that ground. So, uh, And we do know that that mining operation of Barrick's is, is so large. I mean, it uh, produces, in recent years, it's produced a million ounces a year. Um, It's, um, it's fairly constrained in terms of real estate. So if, if for no other reason than just you know, haul roads and, and uh, tailings facilities, we believe that Barrick may need more real estate, but uh, you know, our objective is not to be a real estate play, it's to find you know, mineable ounces that can mm -hmm. feed into the, the long-term growth of that operation. Mm -hmm. uh, understandable. So, um, and as, um, if I uh, right, you have a pretty good run also in the last few weeks uh, in the stock price. Mm -hmm. uh, they're doing real well. Uh, why was the reason why the stock price is now moving? We, so we set in motion the acquisition to acquire this project really started about maybe 18 months ago. And, okay. and, and, but it was in January of 2019, so just about a year ago, we closed the acquisition to acquire this ground. and. Right from the, the beginning, you know, the market had, there was an immediate lift in the share price because of just where this ground is located. Everybody mm -hmm. was excited about it. And of course, you know, investors right away were asking me, when are you going to drill? When are you going to drill? We elected to go about doing the necessary exploration work to give ourselves the best chance of success with the drilling. And so through most of 2019, we were doing groundwork. We were doing geophysics and geochemistry and mapping, um, delineating targets. Uh, and towards the sort of the end of the summer and into the fall of last year, we put out an announcement on the results of that work, followed by you know the eight drill target specific target areas that we had delineated as being priority drill targets. 
Um, we then followed that with the receipt of drill permits, which is you know a big deal when you're dealing in some of these um, smaller countries. You want to make sure that you've got the the, the necessary permitting. We received mm -hmm. that. Um, we then went out and raised uh, 1.3 million dollars specifically for the drill program. And so I think as we got into sort of late November and early December, I think the market was. Uh, feeling as if okay, all, you know, all the the boxes have been ticked off here. Now this is a matter of uh, uh, going out and drilling mm -hmm. these targets, and mm -hmm. so we kind of de-risked all of the necessary uh, preceding work, and now we were getting on the cusp of of a drill play, and that's where we are now. We should be drilling inside of, you know, three to four weeks, something like okay. that. Okay, so it's mean after uh, six, seven weeks, we see then the first drill results coming in. Uh, how large is the drill program? We're planning to drill somewhere in the ballpark of about 2,500 meters to 3,000 meters of drilling. Uh, that will probably they're relatively shallow holes, but that should be maybe maybe an eight-hole program, something like that. Um, there's been a, a bit of a wrinkle in that, a, a positive one. But uh, in recent weeks, we announced the acquisition of drills. There were some drills in country that we had typically contracted, yeah, and. Uh, that drill company went out of business. And so we were sort of forced with hiring someone else, bringing them in from out of country and all the time delays and problems and costs that that brings versus doing a deal to acquire these uh, drills that had fallen into receivership. So we were able to acquire the, the drills for pennies on the dollar and perhaps more importantly, also engage most of the crew that had mm -hmm. been working with these drills. So. I think that our drill, because of that, I think our drill costs are going to go down, and so we may be able to increase that program, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. you know, sort of stretch mm -hmm. out our budget by doing more meters because our costs are going to come down. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, do you work also on, on the other project too? So we speak at the moment um, from from this next to barracks mine. Mm -hmm. um, do we work on, on Gold Quest uh, side too? We haven't in recent, say the last 18 months or 24 months or so. And, and really the, the, the rationale on that is Gold Quest has uh, advanced that project to a point where they're now applying for exploitation permits. So they want to move that into development and towards mm -hmm. production. Um, that project's located in a part of the country where there aren't there isn't any mining history. There's not a lot of mines nearby. It's largely an agricultural district. And so, you know, whether you're in the Dominican Republic or, or Western Canada trying to build a pipeline, you know, sometimes these things uh, require a fair bit of work and effort to get the communities and, mm -hmm. and the locals on side. So I'm confident that Gold Quest is going to get the necessary permits, but it's taking some time. So in the, in the interim, while that is sort of on hold, we've elected to you know, focus our efforts on a part of the, the country where we believe there's, you know, currently there's a little bit more clarity in terms of a path forward to production. And, and you create more value for the dollar what you spend. Correct. I think if we were to go back to our, our project, which is called uh, Wanda Herrera near Gold Quest, and spend money there, even if we were to have success, I think there would be a perception from the market, well, what's the point of finding gold there until you know you can extract it mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. with permits? So yes. I think, you know, I think like a lot of things, this will take some time and a little bit of political will, but I'm confident that uh, that Gold Quest will succeed and get those necessary permits, and at that time, our project next to them will become uh, more of a focus for oh. us as well. Do you looking for more acquisition? We are always sort of on the lookout for that. I mean, I think it's always important to, if you have an opportunity to acquire prospective ground at terms that make sense, yes. Um, but again, we're a small company and, uh, you know, I think you need to be streamlined with your budgeting mm -hmm. and make sure that you're executing on the things that your investors have invested for. Mm -hmm. And right now, I think we've got two two projects with a number of drill targets that are drill ready, were permitted at both projects uh, for drilling. And so, you know, I think rather than get too diluted with too many projects, I think uh, we feel like we've got two really good shots here and that they both require, uh, you know, focus and, and, mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, basically staying on path. Okay, understandable. Um, shareholder structure, how many shares are outstanding? You have bigger groups, they have some, some stocks? Yes. So we have 92 million shares issued and outstanding now. Uh, we just closed that financing in November. Um, so some of that stock is still restricted. Uh, we have about six and a half million shares of that that is uh, also restricted from resale. It's shares that we gave to the 
uh, company that we bought the new project from. We gave mm -hmm. them shares that were restricted for up to three years, so those are not in a public float. Um, insiders hold about 8 to 10%. Um, we have a fund out of the Netherlands that owns about 9%. Uh, of the stock and has participated in multiple financings and our largest shareholder is a company called strategic metals uh, mm -hmm. you may know those guys here in vancouver uh, strategic has been very successful have a you know very good track record uh, for exploration early stage exploration um, and they participated in a financing in late 2015 uh, subsequently exercised all of their warrants and so they sit on about a little over 20 million shares of the company, uh, a little over 20%. So I think that, you know, yes, we have 92 million shares out, but when you sort of look at all the individual uh, facts behind that, you know, this, the float is still relatively lean and uh, in, in, in pretty good hands. Mm -hmm. uh, Jeff, thank you for the first introduction to your company. So, um, also, it's good. Ah, your focus still on the Dominican Republic or, or if the time right then you go to other areas yeah I mean we we've had assets in Canada before mm -hmm. uh, we had some projects in the Yukon uh, one of which we optioned um, in, a, in a quite mutually beneficial deal to Golden Predator mm -hmm. we had ground adjacent to their three aces uh, project so yeah we're not uh, we're not opposed to um, you know exploring in other jurisdictions as long as it makes sense and um, yeah, so you know we've worked in multiple different countries and uh, happy to do that again if opportunities arise. Mm -hmm. Also, Sie haben in der Dominikanischen Republik zwei große Projekte. Das eine liegt neben Gold Quest, das andere nimmt, äh, liegt neben der Berwick, ihrer Mine. Sie konzentrieren sich jetzt derzeit auf das ähm, Projekt, das neben Berwick liegt. Warum? Weil ähm, dort äh, erstens einmal es sehr gute äh, Targets gibt. Sie haben jetzt ein Bohrprogramm auf den Weg gebracht, der in drei Wochen lang, also in drei Wochen starten soll. Sie haben die Bohrgeräte selber gekauft, weil die Bohrfirma ähm, aufgehört hat zum Arbeiten, wahrscheinlich Nachfolgeprobleme. Jetzt haben sie die Bohrgeräte gekauft, plus auch groß aus der Crew gesichert, sodass die Kosten natürlich fürs Bohren billiger wird. Sie werden jetzt ungefähr 2.000 bis 3.000 äh, Meter bohren, ähm, circa acht Löcher. Und äh, dann wollen sie sozusagen, also dann sieht man zumindest einmal, wie weit es dementsprechend oder wie gut es das dementsprechend ausschaut. Beim zweiten Projekt, bei, bei GoldQuest, haben sie momentan ein bisschen auf Hold. Die äh, sind gerade dabei, die quasi die Entwicklungslizenz äh, zu ziehen. Äh, das dauert allerdings relativ lange, weil das eine Area ist, wo sehr wenig äh, Minen sind. Das heißt, die, die, die Gebiete, die Region ist relativ unerfahren, was Minen betrifft. Und daher dauert es einiges Zeit. Und wenn Sie dort jetzt anfangen würden, noch Gold zu suchen, auch wenn es Erfolg hätte, sind dann doch die Anleger dann sehr skeptisch, ob man es in Produktion bringen kann oder nicht. Und deswegen haben wir gesagt, nein, konzentrieren wir sich aufs andere, weil da wissen wir einfach, dass es das funktioniert. Und wenn dann den dementsprechend Gold Quest die Genehmigung hat, kommen wir dementsprechend zurück. Es sind 92 Millionen Aktien draußen. Uh, Strategic Metals, so dass ich es rauskriege, hat über 20 Prozent. Das Management hat zwischen 8 und 10 uh, Prozent. Und uh, verschiedene andere haben auch noch größere Positionen. Und deswegen schaut es so aus, wie wenn 92 Millionen viel sind. Aber in Wirklichkeit sind gar nicht so viel, weil sehr uh, viele Aktien in uh, guten strategischen Händen sind. Ja. Spannend wird es jetzt dann noch ein beim Bohrprogramm werden. Die Bohr ersten Ergebnisse werden wir sechs, sieben Wochen bekommen. Und das wird dann quasi bestimmen, wohin die Reise geht. Und äh, bin gespannt, wenn die natürlich mit ähnlichen Gehalten auftauchen, wie das Berg auch hat, dann könnte das ein neuer Move auslösen. Die Aktie ist sehr gut gelaufen, liegt wahrscheinlich auch an der höheren Erwartungshaltung. Das war's vom Unternehmen im Jänner 2020 Vancouver. Tschüss und Baba. Thank you. My pleasure. Thanks for the opportunity.